Hey all, Chris Bassett here, and I'm going to be doing a front tire change on my Sportster. Let's get into it. In order to remove the front wheel, you'll need to support the motorcycle so that the front wheel clears the ground. There's a lot of different procedures, including using a suitable swing arm, jacks, uh, motorcycle stands, scissor jacks. Uh, I just threw a couple of uh, jack stands under the uh, foot pegs and then the rear wheels on the ground so it acts like a tripod. Uh, gives it enough clearance to pull the front wheel off. You may need an assistant to help and also you may want to tie down the motorcycle as well. Uh, there's a picture of the jacks and the jack location. So you'll only need a couple inches of clearance and then you'll be able to take the motorcycle wheel off and work on the tire. Uh, now the next step would be to remove the brake caliper mounting bolts and lift the caliper away from the brake disc. Make sure that you want to support the caliper so it's not hanging from the brake line. So there's your brake caliper and those are the two mounting bolts. After you pull out both silver bolts, keep in mind which is which, they're different lengths, you want to put a spacer between the brake pads. If the brake lever is accidentally applied, the pistons will be forced out of the caliper. If they're forced out, you need to disassemble the caliper and reseat the pistons. I used a 10 millimeter socket to pull both the brake caliper mounting bolts off. Next thing you want to do is remove the axle nut, lock washer, and flat washer from the uh, right hand side. I like to use my rubber mallet to break stuff loose. Uh, that way it comes off a little easier. And then if you are having trouble getting that inside washer out, a magnet can help draw it out. On the 1988 to 2003 models, you want to loosen the front axle pinch bolt nut, but don't remove the actual bolt. This is what holds the axle in place. So you just need to loosen it up. That way you can slide the axle out. I'll put a ratchet on one side, the nut side, and then an Allen wrench on the other side to hold the bolt in place while I loosen it up. With everything loose, you can go ahead and tap the end of the axle with a soft faced mallet and remove it from the wheel. If the axle is tight, tap the end of the axle with a brass or aluminum drift to drive it through the rest of the forks. It helps if you support the wheel with one hand while you pull out the axle with the other. The thinner washer is on the left and the thicker washer or spacer is on the right. Now that the wheel is off, we can go ahead and swap out the tires and the inner tube. Since my front wheel is spoked, it needs an inner tube, but if you have a cast front wheel, you won't need an inner tube. I bought both my front and rear tires off Amazon for like 130 bucks. I'll put links in the description to all the parts and tools that I'm using to do this. So if you want to help support the channel, go ahead and check those out. So we're going to need to let the air out of the tire. I've got a uh, valve core removal tool right there. Uh, that'll just pop out the valve core and then the air will drain. I also have this tire removal tool, which uh, turns out that didn't work so well. So I'm going to use tire spoons to get my tire off. So just put the slotted side inside the valve stem and twist it out like a screw. Uh, it'll come out and then the, t the air will be released pretty quickly. This 12 millimeter wrench is used to loosen the nut on the inner tube. That way you can push the valve stem back through the rim uh, and then take out the inner tube. A few things to note on your tire is some of them are balanced. Um, so if you look at the tire, there's usually a yellow red dot on the actual tire. And then you'll also see the rotation of the tire. You want to line those up and make sure that your rotation is going the right way and that the uh, balancing is also at the valve stem. So the next step in order to get the tire off would be to break the bead. So you're just going to place your tool in between the rim and the tire and then press down to draw the tire away from the rim and that's breaking the bead. You want to do that completely on both sides of the tire uh, before you try to remove it otherwise it's going to give you a real hard time. And then here you can see I've broken the bead all around the tire and it looks like it's free from the rim. So I'm going to switch up tools. I bought these tire spoons which were recommended uh, much better. They're smoother rounder edges and then they have rim guards that go with it too that way when you're prying on the tire you don't tear up your rim too bad. I also put a towel down that way when I'm uh, you know leaning on it putting weight on it I'm not tearing up the brake disc or the rim itself, a little bit of extra padding. Uh, you wanna get soapy water. 100%, this is the biggest thing that makes the tire come on and off with the easiest amount. If you think you don't have enough soapy water, uh, you're, you need more. <laughs> like this is, I can't emphasize this enough that you really wanna keep it soapy and uh, because it, the tire just, you'll fight it. It will not come off unless it's super soapy. Uh, keep soaping it up like every two minutes also. 
So once you've broken the bead on both sides of the tire, now you want to pull the tire off of one side of the rim. So this is where the rim guards and the tire spoons come into play is you'll pry the tire up and out and then see how I've kind of hold it in place. Now I've got two and now the tire is just over the lip of the rim. Um, you'll want to keep working it around in a circular motion and you want to, you know, continue like every, you know, put space, I don't know, five, four inches in between each tire spoon and keep working it around and eventually you'll get the tire over the rim. Remember, if you're fighting it, more soapy water. Also keep in mind, if you're really being rough with it, you could bend your brake disc, so you don't want to do that. Um, once you have enough of the tire pulled up, you can just kind of pull it away from the rim, and then you'll see I've got half the tire off the rim now. And uh, so we're halfway through the process of just getting the tire off. At this point, you can reach inside and you can pull out the inner tube. Uh, the old inner tube, don't need that anymore. So just go ahead and get that out of your way. It's highly recommended that when you replace the tire, you also replace the inner tube. Uh, mine was pretty rusty, and yeah, so I just bought a new inner tube. Uh, it was like 20 bucks. If you're wanting the part number, it's an MH90 uh, 21-inch tire. Then once you have the inner tube out, you can pull the rest of the tire off. Uh, see, there's the bare rim. Um, I just applied the same technique where I stuck the tire spoons through the tire and continued to pry around in a circular fashion. Um, one thing I will say is don't do this barefoot. Dropping a rim on your feet really hurts. <laughs> so next thing, it's pretty important that you get the rotation correct. If you don't, it'll just increase the wear on your tire. Line up that dot with your valve stem, and then you're ready to start working the tire on. So in order to get your tire on, you want to put just half of it on first. Same technique applies. Extra soapy water, and then use your tire spoons in a circular fashion to pry the tire on. Uh, make sure you line up your dot, and then we'll go ahead and put the inner tube in. So an easy way to get the inner tube in is to inflate it to like five pounds. That way there's just a little bit of pressure, and that way you can force it in, you know, lift the tire up halfway, and then you can kind of stuff the inner tube in, and you make sure that you line up the valve stem. So you lift the tire up and then stuff it, and just work yourself around. Like I said, if it's a little bit inflated, it goes in a lot easier. So now that the inner tube's in place, uh, we're going to go ahead and soap up the tire and then finish seating the tire in the rim. So if you think you have enough soapy water, um, you don't. Go ahead and put like two or three times the amount. Keep soaping it up. Uh, it'll allow the tire to slide on easy. I know I'm not using my rim guard, so don't freak out, but I just got frustrated working this tire on, and I'm like, ah, screw it. So you'll use the hooked side of the spoon, and you'll, you know, twist the tire spoon down and force the tire inside of the rim. Uh, like I said, work uh, one spoon after the other in a circular fashion. You need to be real patient. Uh, it's not going to be easy, especially when you get towards that final spot. Uh, once you get the tire on, go ahead and air it up. Uh, this is the position of the spacers, uh, big spacer to the right, small spacer to the left. You want to make sure that you clean and grease the axle. I'd install the washer, lock washer, axle nut all finger tight because we're going to want to balance the tire. The best way to do it is to take it to a shop that has a wheel balancer, but I'm going to do it in my garage. So once it's on the motorcycle, you want to slowly spin the wheel and note where it comes to rest with a piece of chalk or tape or crayon. Mark the 12 o'clock position on the wheel. That's technically called the light spot, while the heavy spot is on the bottom where it's resting. You want to turn the wheel 90 degrees to both the 3 o'clock position and the 9 o'clock positions to see if the light spot returns to the 12 o'clock position and the heavy spots at the 6. If so, tape the wheel at the rim so that the light spot is marked. Spoked wheels use like crimped on fishing type weights, while cast wheels use adhesive backed lead weights. Add weights to the wheel at the heavy position and keep repeating the 12 o'clock test until you've added or removed enough weight that the wheel remains motionless. After you have your front wheel balanced, it's time to secure the axle. Uh, there's certain torque measurements you need to abide by. So on the 88 to 03 models, insert a rod through the axle hole to hold the axle in place and tighten the axle nut to 50 to 55 foot-pounds of torque. Then you want to tighten the front axle pinch bolt to 21 to 27 foot-pounds and then remove the rod from the axle hole. Once your axle's all tight and good to go, you can install your brake caliper. Brake caliper bolts are 20 to 25 foot-pounds. 
After the wheel and the brake are completely installed, rotate the wheel several times and apply the front brake a couple of times to make sure the wheel rotates freely and that the brake pad seat against the brake disc correctly. Hey, check out this other video right here. I put links in the description for the parts, so check that out. If you have any questions, put it down in the comments, and if this was helpful, hit the like button. Thanks.